Oh. Hello, X fans. I'm back in the woods. Kind of a shitty day. So I'm going to chop wood with my axes. Because that's useful. One of the goals with just doing this um, project is just to learn more about axes, right? You know, I collect them and um, just always wanted to really take them out and use them and compare them and see what they're like, you know, actually chopping wood, you know, not just looking good, but chopping wood. So, um, doing these axe arenas, right? And, um, and um, I'm learning a lot, uh, learning a lot uh, about these axes, even already. I think this is group D, right, group D. Uh, not trying to bring anybody down, but just, you know, having a day, right? So I'm out in the woods, well, let's do this, right? Okay, hell, hell of a group. We got here today um, some very premium axes, very premium axes. Only one will advance. Um, on the light side for today's choices is a vintage um, Grands Fours Brook uh, Michigan pattern, three and a half pounds, right? Very common uh, in the era. Uh, this was distributed by Stroh Brothers in the United States in the 60s and 70s. So, you know, if you get one of these Grand Fours heads, it was probably distributed by Strobros, right? That's what they call them. Um, great axes, um, of course, and everybody knows. This classic pattern, kind of shine this up, got a kind of pit and polish thing going there, but it's paired on a hand-carved handle uh, by a guy in Canada. That's a really great job. This is a really great handle um, paired with this head. So this is just a classic axe, and um, but it's up against some serious competition. Uh, what we have here is a stock Helco work, right? Helco Burke, German, and this is their big four and a half pound Tasmanian pattern felling axe, and a big old long, I think it's 34, 36 inch handle that is like a rowing oar. This is so big. I had, I've heard this referred to as an ogre handle. <laughs> it is an ogre handle. This is a troll club. Just a monster. And that's in the tradition of these big Tasmanian pattern um, heads. Um, and this one's stock right out of the box. Okay. But they all got to go up against my custom Harvika 5 star. All right. I have a tutorial on this uh, channel about how I restored this Holtzbrook Arvika 5 star, also a Tasmanian pattern. I'm gonna take this off, right? Got leather for it now. Big time, big time. And I went all out. I went all out on, you know, attempting to tune this ax to high performance. And it is, it is really tuned in there. And so I kind of feel like um, the German representative here today is in a lot of trouble. Uh, is in a lot of trouble. I'll tell you why. Because these big stock Tasmanian patterns, um, by tradition, come with a really, really fat angle. They just do. This is the way the dies are made in these factories, and they have been for decades. So they come with these 35, 45 degree uh, angles here on the ends. And so far, in all the groups that have come, you know, in the woods out here where I'm chopping right now, boy, you need a, you need a sharp angle. It just, bringing that angle down into the 20s is a quantum leap in performance. And so, even though it's a great ax, um, and there's a lot I could do to tune it up, it's gonna be in trouble today. It's gonna have its hands full. <laughs> I'm sick of setting chokers in this doggone rain. I got everything to lose and nothing to gain. I'm from sick of climbing these steep hillsides. Well, the seat of my brand new bridges is slack. I think I got moss growing on my back. And I'm just a little bit homesick to the side. Well, I come out here to this big northwest Try and make a killing I heard the wages in the woods was best And a logger's life was thrilling Well, I've been here quite a while and I ain't been thrilled 
couple of times I was darn near killed And I'm plumb sick of setting jokers in this doggone rain I got a pair of cork boots and a tin hat to sell That big hook tender can go straight to town And try to get somebody else to take my place I'm catching the first train at Southern Bound Monday morning I won't be around I guess the high lead log and I'm a plum disgrace Well I come out here to this big northwest To try and make a killing I heard the wages in the woods was best And a logger's life was thrilling Well I've been here quite a while and I ain't been thrilled Couple of times I was darn near killed And I'm plumb sick of setting chokers in this doggone brain I've seen two loggers stand toe to toe and slug it out in a free for all fight. And when it was over, they'd get up and shake hands and laugh and drink together the rest of that night. I've seen a logger pick up a baby bird and put it back into its nest. And I've never heard one criticizing a man when he knew he was doing his best. They're a rough, rowdy breed of people but it's a rough life they live. And most of the time their job's demanding just a little bit more than they can give. They come home at night so doggone tired, bruised and cut and sore. Get up next morning with a big old grin and go right back out for more. To the same steep muddy hillsides they were cussing the day before. There walks a man I think a logger loves his family Just a little bit more than most men As he knows if he makes just one mistake He'll never get to see him again Oh, a line could break or a tail hold slip And cut a man half in two Danger's there lurking everywhere and the rewards are just all too few. But it's a life he chose and whichever way it goes, his family will understand. Because when he walks in through that door at night, they know that there walks a man. Oh, I have no motivation to make coffee today. None. Just chopping wood. But learning, learning's great. I'm learning a lot about axes. Every time I come out, I get a little bit better. A little bit better about uh, choosing where to cut, um, how to cut it, you know, cutting a nice, tight, efficient V, those kind of things. Um, really good, you know, to, to actually work on that. But this was an interesting group. This was a really interesting group for a lot of reasons. Okay. Hell could work. Big Tassie. Um, a lot of axe for me, I guess, all right? I mean, you know, it's just like, I could never get on top of this axe. I guess, boy, it's really interesting. This is really, really interesting because um, my Arvika 5 Star, this, these are the same weight. These weigh the same, you know, the profile is quite different, but it's the same weight on top. They could not feel more different when you're swinging them. They just, like, you know, I just really couldn't, couldn't, figure out how to do this one well um, and it's probably because I need to tune it uh, to me you know I need to make this handle a lot lot thinner and slimmer just so it feels and carries the weight better and then yeah that 45 degree angle kind of was uh, hard going in the woods today hard going in the woods Gransforsch Gransforsch Brook you see Grandsforsch up in the 
Swedish area where Grandsfors Brook, the factory, actually is up in rural Sweden. Um, they have a fun accent up there. And it's way out there. It's way out there. That's a tiny business. That's a small business. You'd be surprised just out in this little rural town. Wow, this really surprised me. I love the handle, okay? I'm learning very quickly the big palm swells like this one. All right, they don't have to be super fancy like this, really nice, but big palm swells really are great. They really give, you know, that trail hand something to hang on to and just gives you more confidence in the swing, right? And uh, this head here, you know, cut real well. It cut real well. Um, for the angle that's on it, I'm very impressed. I'm gonna make a template of this uh, this grind because you know for for what for that angle, yeah, it was really nice. I, I actually did really really well. But but the lesson of Group D is how much um, spending some time tuning your axe up can pay off in performance. Sure, it looks great, but it just this is a a wood killing machine of all the groups so far this is a very formidable axe and it's because I spent a lot of time you know I probably spent I probably spent 10 hours I don't know probably on this bevel you know grinding it with stones sharpening it you know all of 20 minutes maybe thinning the handle which is probably the biggest payoff there in terms of ROI thin the handles boy just take a rasp Go out and take an ax, start chopping wood, and, and with the rasp, thin the handle to your, to just your perfect comfort zone. It's incredible. It's an incredible payoff for that amount of work. It took like 20 minutes, all right, before all the paint and all that stuff. That was extra, but our week five star, moving on. She's a winner. Where there walks a logger.